Hi, this is Henry. Uh, I'm going to be making a uh, parametric brick coursing uh, on a surface. Uh, I did this in class. I'm going to be doing it slightly differently. Um, this one is going to be corbelled. Um, and I'm going to break this tutorial up into a couple parts. Um, so you can see I, I've modeled a surface here. Um, and I'm going to put that into a parameter. Call it uh, control surface. And I'm going to turn its layer off. And then the next thing I want to do is I, I, I want to set up um, I want to set up my my bricks. Uh, and I'm going to be using brick in two orientations. And I'm going to set up one brick for each orientation. So um, first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to get a construct point and an x y plane that I want to put the brick on. And I'm going to need that plane, so I'm going to get a parameter, and we'll call this plane 1. Uh, and I'm going to make a box, a domain box. Use that plane. Um, go. And I need uh, dimensions for the, um, for the brick. And so each one is going to have a width. It's going to have a length. Um, and it's going to have a height. And there's going to be um, a, a mortar joint. So we're going to assume uh, a 3 eighths inch mortar joint. And we're going to assume that that's consistent and that it's a, a modular brick and that both bricks will have a 2 and 1 quarter inch height. And then for uh, brick 1, or orientation one, however you want to think about it. Let's assume seven plus five eighths is the width, because when you add that to the mortar joint, right, um, and if we go ahead and we say add addition, the mortar joint plus the width, you know, that's going to give us overall width one. Uh, and then the length, again, will be a modular brick, 3 and 5 eighths inch. Um, and if we add the length to the mortar joint, that will be the overall length one. And then lastly, if I do an addition, the mortar joint plus the height, that is going to be the height of one course. So let's call that course height. All right. Um, and now, so with my domain box, if I just plug the overall width, or not the overall width, excuse me, the width, so without the mortar joint, right into the X, um, it by default gives me a domain of zero to the width. So I don't, I don't have to create a domain. Um, and if I do the same with the length into the Y and the height, again, this is without the mortar joint, into the Z, right? There's our first brick. And let's create a BRAP and let's call that brick one. Now for the second orientation, um, what I'm going to do is, uh, you know, I'm going to copy all this. Why my copy is being weird? It keeps copying in Rhino. Copy. There we go. I'm going to copy all this, um, and I'm just going to put into this construct point. 
I don't know, negative 12, so I can move it over. And this is going to be plane 2. Um, and plane 2, actually, I'm going to get rid of here the, the course height and the mortar joint and the height and just assume that we use the same height from over here so that uh, and this time what I'm going to do is uh, the um, I'm just going to change the width and the length so now the width is 3 and 5 eighths and the length is 7 and 5 eighths um, to make sure, there we go, that's the length. For some reason that came detached. So this is gonna be my overall width two, and my overall length two, and this is brick two. All right, so now I have my two orientations of brick, or brick one and brick two, however you, however you wanna think about them. Um, and then over here, I have my surface. So what I want to do now is I want to set up a bunch of horizontal lines along the surface uh, at incremental heights uh, going by the, um, the course height, right? Or the, uh, the course height is, of course, the height of one brick plus a mortar joint. So here's my course height. Um, and what I want to do is I, I, I sort of just need a way to reference uh, the height of my surface here. So um, I'm going to take my control surface and reparameterize it and do an evaluate surface and get a um, construct point. And if I evaluate it at 0, 0, which is the defaults for construct point, you can see I get a point that's in the lower left-hand corner. Um, and if I do the same thing, except I evaluate it at um, 0, 1, you can see I get a point in the upper left-hand corner. And what I really care about on those points is not so much where they are in X and Y, uh, is I care about their heights. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to deconstruct both of those points. Oops. And then I'm going to construct points at 0, 0, um, and I'm just going to use the Z value. Right, and so you can see that's given me these two points. Oops. One down here, one up here. Um, and I can create a, a line in between them. And then what I can do is I can use that line and I can do a uh, divide distance. And if I divide that up uh, by the course height, then I get a bunch of points, one, uh, one at each course. So what I want to do now is use those points to, uh, to get a series of contours on the surface. And you can do that if you go to intersect mathematical uh, and find the intersection between a B rep and a plane. Now the B-Rep is our control surface. I don't know why, ah, there we go. I'm a lot of trouble with copying and pasting. Um, and the plane is going to be a series of XY planes at each one of those points. And so now if I, hide the geometry and all of those. 
Right, you can see uh, now, if you look in elevation, they look like straight lines, but they follow uh, the curve in plan. Um, and let's call these our uh, course curves. And I also want to know how many of them there are. Um, so you can see those are uh, there right now, and if I, I simplify, you can see that each one is its own list. There's 45 lists of one course curve, and that's actually going to be useful to us. So I'm not going to flatten that. But I am going to get a list length and dump it into the list length and flatten the input. And that will tell me how many elements are in the list. So basically, I took a list, uh, or 45 lists of one curve, flattened it into a list of 45 curves, and then used a component that said how many, how many things in that list. And it says 46, actually, not 45. So let's call this num courses. Um, and that's going to be important when we try to take these uh, lines and divide them up and try to populate them with these bricks. And I'm going to do that uh, in the next part of this tutorial.